beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 71 of Stitching the High Notes. My name is Joanna and I am coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where I'm a local opera singer, arts administrator, and maker of all of the things. This is my little corner of the interwebs where I share what I am up to in the knitting sphere, cross-stitching, sewing, all kinds of stuff. I hope you are doing well. It's been on a little over a month, I think, since my last confession, as I like to say, since my last episode. I have a lot to share with you, so let's jump right in and start properly with, you guessed it, if you're a returning viewer, tea time. Welcome back. If you're a new viewer, welcome, welcome. We like to start each episode officially with tea time and it's always in quotes these days because in the morning which it is right now it's Thursday September 5th and I am filming and visiting with you a little bit before I head off to work so there's coffee in here you better believe it <laughs> especially after last night um, my eyes are watering excuse me we had our my first gala of the week. <laughs> I sing with the San Francisco Symphony Chorus as a professional member, and I also work as an arts administrator over at, across the street, literally, at the San Francisco Opera. And so yesterday, Wednesday, was the Symphony's Gala, which the chorus sang in. It was so fantastic. I'll have more to share about that later down the line in backstage chatter. Um, and then Friday, tomorrow, is the gala, the opening night for the opera, which I'll be working at. So yeah, coffee is much needed today. So grab your beverage of choice. I have lots to share with you, some knitting, some cross-stitching, some shop news, some things that I'm about to cast on. Um, some prizes for the summer make-along, uh, a new make-along, the pumpkin mail, some details about that. Um, what else do I have? Lots of backstage chatter about the gala last night, things I'm reading, and some exciting news about Patreon. Stay tuned. So grab your beverage and cheers. Sweet, sweet nectar of the gods. <laughs> I finished a few things since I last visited with you. The first of which I've already gifted to my mother and they were my pride socks, which I called, which were, the pattern was by uh, Cookie A and it was called Monkey Socks. Oh, I love them so much. They turned out so well. I'm probably showing you a video here so you can see what they look like. They were made with yarn from my stash um, that was gifted to me by Sinister Yarns in the, I'm looking at my show notes here, I think it was the, I, I can't remember the color we need, but I'll put it down here. Marianne, I don't believe is dying right now, so dying yarn right now, so um, sorry about that, but I love, love the yarn and love how it knitted up in this pattern. Uh, I wish I had done Judy's or uh, Jenny's stretchy bind off for the cuff. Um, I did them um, cuff down or cast on, I guess. I needed a looser cast on for the cuff um, because they're a bit tight on mom's feet. Um, I think she's blocked them now and they fit okay. So in the future, I might use a bigger needle side size for the pattern sock as well. I think my gauge was a little bit tighter than usual because of the pattern, um, but they turned out beautifully. I love them, they were wonderful. So those have been gifted. Uh, and then the next thing I literally just finished. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's just, it's always the finishing that holds me back. But it is my gigantic, let's get the right side going, Jessie's pullover. And yes, it is gigantic, but I love it. I just need to weave in the ends and do a steam blocking, just a really light blocking. Um, oh, I've got a little thing I've got to pull through here, figure out. 
but I tried it on this morning. It is definitely oversized. I perhaps could have cast on a size smaller, but I think I'm probably in between sizes, so I'm glad I went with the larger, especially after my summer make last year, which was way too small, definitely human error. I have plans for that, but another time for that. But um, yes, I really, really love this. This is gonna be a great like walking on the beach on a like foggy summer day, um, kind of layering it with like a, a beautiful like scarf, wear a tank top underneath. I could probably wear, frankly, a t-shirt underneath this. It's so big, <laughs> but I really, really love it. All once I um, put in the ends and steam block it, I'll have some pictures up on Instagram, which by the way, I probably put up the information. I'm not very good about <laughs> telling you all verbally. I am on Instagram as Opera Joe, and you can also see um, what's coming to the shop and some little sneak peeks and stuff on at Stitching the High Notes on Instagram. And there is a Ravelry group uh, for Stitching the High Notes. And come join us over there. We're a bunch of stitchy misfits, as I like to say. And we have all the information about make-alongs and all kinds of stuff there. And on Ravelry as well, I have my project page, which has all the details about what I'm making and what I finished. So if you're on the project page, you probably say, see I used size 8 needles. Um, I used a 3-needle bind-off yesterday and today. <laughs> this morning for the shoulders, which turned out beautifully. The arms are just really, really simple. They're just, it's just garter for days. It's beautiful. You knit in the round up until you separate for the armholes. Oh, that's the neck. <laughs> I was like, that's a very large armhole. Um, and then you do back and forth kind of garter with short rows shaping for the shoulders. So it's super, super simple. And you can see a little bit at the bottom there, there's a high-low hem, a beautiful high-low hem. And I love this yarn. This was beautiful, beautiful, that's getting softer and softer Euroflex yarn. I'll have the information down here and there, everything's down in the show notes down below as well. <sighs> it's beautiful and I love the color. I'm really, really happy with it. I wish I had done, I wish it was a little bit smaller, but I think, I think it's all good. For the garment that it is, it's meant to be oversized. So yeah, and if anything, I could style it in different ways. I could like probably put like a really pretty belt with it maybe at some point. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities for it, so. So that is another finished make. And then I finished another make, which I need to go grab. I forgot to bring it over here. Hold on. I cast on the minute I got the yarn in the mail and I just am so happy with it. Um, Jewels of So Sweet Violet has come up with a beautiful dishcloth pattern called the Wondrous Dishcloth. And I've made one so far. Ta-da! Isn't that pretty? Let me get closer. I'm trying a new setup where I'm a little bit further away, but I need to scoot closer to show you my makes. Love it, love it. So it's a very simple paid for pattern. You, you can see the little kind of dimples here. That's for every so many rows on a repeat, you connect it to the front piece. So it's knit in the round magic loop, um, but this way it's like really secure. I haven't used it yet, so I'm really excited to use it. I used, I think size four needles, I believe. Um, but I think I'm gonna try the next one to see, um, try smaller needles to see if it kind of comes out a little bit tighter. I think this works fine and actually I'm gonna use it before I cast on a new one, trying out smaller needles, cause I might be fine. I think it's great that you can kind of double it up and you have this kind of lovely pattern where you have a little bit of texture where you can kind of scrub the pan a little bit and then this softer side as well. 
gorgeous. So I got a few little balls of yarn for these. <laughs> I'm using the same yarn that she used for her samples. It's a Sheepies Katona and they're little 25 gram balls of cotton. And they're so cute. Very cute. I got two of each in different colorways. I don't think the colorways are on here, but they've got gorgeous names. Um, that's because I wanna make a little rainbow set for me and a rainbow set for my mama um, as a gift. I think mom, I'm gonna do it when you move into your new house. So you'll have a little dishcloth set. So yeah, they're great. They knit up so fast. I think I made this in a couple of days maybe and it was a great kind of palette cleanser in between um, projects. I cast it on I think after I finished mom's socks and before I cast on a pair of vanilla socks that I'll show you here in a second. Can't recommend it higher enough. I have in my queue, I think it's by Elizabeth Doherty, a bath mitt um, that you can use linen yard, yarn for and you put it like a bar of soap in it and you can use it in the shower for um, like your soap for your body. Um, I'm trying to convert over to bar soap um, for shampoo and conditioner and um, for my body. <laughs> I don't know what else to call that, body soap. Uh, and yeah, so I think I wanna make that next, maybe with the, I mean, that'd be a really shishi bath mitt, but with the leftovers of the Your Flex linen that I have um, for my Jessie's Girl, because why not? So stay tuned for that if I cast them on. And that brings us to makes in progress. Before I jump into makes in progress, I actually want to announce the winners of the summer garment mail. Yay! Thank you all so much for taking part again in the, I think it was the third annual summer garment mail. And it was so much fun. I made the Jessie's Girl pullover for it this year, finished well, last night, so a little bit over the deadline, but that's A-OK, -okay, right? Um, and so many of you finished some gorgeous makes. A lot of you cast new ones on that you're still working on. And it's just, yeah, it was fantastic. So there were 55 entries in the finished makes thread on Ravelry. And this morning I took some uh, beautiful yarn for giveaway prizes um, to share with you all from my prize stash and drew with random number generator um, for winners, yay! So the winners are for this first beautiful, oh my God, it's so pretty, beautiful skein of Sincere Sheep yarn. And that's so pretty. And these prizes were all donated by Pam, so thank you, Pam. This is uh, Covet, is the colorway name. This is in their Alpaca DK base. It's with 60% um, Rambouillet wool, 25% Alpaca, and 15% silk. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the var variety of greens. So pretty. So the winner of this skein is beautiful Natalie. Yay! Natalie is from Canada and Natalie Sheldon, I'll be putting your Ravelry names down here below. And she sewed up a beautiful skirt. So congratulations, Natalie. Reach out to me with your address, which I think I have, but send it to me again um, at opera at stitchingthehighnotes.com and I'll send this off to you. Okay. The second prize is this gorgeous skein of forage color for Signature Needle Arts in Sand and Sky is the colorway name. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And this is 425 yards, 100 grams of finger weight, fingering weight, 70% merino wool, 30% silk. Oh, they're so luxurious. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful blues and just a variety of blues and grays, like blue grays. Pretty. So the winner of this is post number 52, and that was Penashuka, 
and that is Anna from Hungary. Congratulations, Anna. And she made a gorgeous cropped soldatna. So reach out to me, Anna, and I will pop this in the mail to you. The third prize is this beautiful apple tree knit skein uh, in plush fingering in perfect picnic sky. This is 100% superwash merino. It's a mini, so it might be perfect for like a shorty pair of socks. It's 280 yards, 56 grams. So there you go, you see like a variegated. Oh, so pretty. I love the ply on this yarn too, it's so gorgeous. Love it. So the winner of this beautiful skein of yarn is post number 24, who is Doreen. Doreen Macy from Canada, and she made a beautiful easy folded poncho in hand spun woolen or uh, wool and silk. It's gorgeous. So Doreen, reach out to me and I'll pop this in the mail to you. And then finally, the fourth prize is this gorgeous, I mean they're all gorgeous, um, skein of watershed yarn. First time I had seen this. This is an American spun yarn from Harrisville Designs, I believe. Uh, this is 100% pure virgin wool. The color weight is Barn Door. Not a pretty, pretty red. So pretty. And I think it's, it kind of looks like a worsted at least. I'm trying to see what the thing is. It doesn't say, but. It's beautiful, DK or worsted. Gorgeous. And this is 110 yards or 50 grams. Cool. So the winner of this beautiful skein is post number 11, Ninja Goddess. Yay! Uh, that is Anna from South Carolina. Hope you're doing well, Anna, and are safe with the hurricane. Fingers are crossed. Uh, she made the Andy top, which was a crochet pattern, and it was beautiful. So, congratulations, everybody. Reach out to me, Opera Joe, at stitchingthehighnotes.com with your address, and I'll send these off soon. I have just one make in progress currently, and that is a pair of vanilla socks because I just needed something super simple, especially for this week. I make socks for mom pretty much exclusively, and then I'm going to be testing out a... Um, recipe for myself for shorty socks using the leftover yarns from the socks that I make for her. So this one has a little story. <laughs> it looks beautiful now. <laughs> it's all coming together. This is a um, stash yarn. I have another ball waiting over there for the second sock. This is Regia Arnie and Carlos. I'm looking for the ball band. So you can see it here. It's color 03656. <laughs> it has this really cool kind of pattern. You can kind of see on the ball band there. And you can see it in the live sock. So it's great. It's self patterning yarn. It's really kind of rustic and nice as kind of a lot of Regia yarns are. I'm using a stitch marker by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I was ready for pumpkin everything for the pumpkin mail. <laughs> and the story of this is that probably, I think it was like right after I finished the toe, like right around here, there was a knot in the yarn. It had broken and somebody just straight up tied it in a knot together. I was not happy. But I chilled out, <laughs> I breathed, and I was like, I just want that sweet vanilla in the round magic loop knitting. So I fixed it and we're back on track and I'm still in pattern, which is great. Then I was like knitting along and then it happened again, not a knot, but it was like the ply was frayed. <sighs> I was out with my friend. I had a lovely craft noon with my friend Margaret and we both were just like, what 
the F. <laughs> I put it in timeout for a day and I was about to just frog it and find some different yarn. But I really, I was like, okay, let's just, try, let's fix it again, see if it's still in pattern. So I did, it's still in pattern. But literally, even if I finish one sock, if it happens again, nope, no more. <laughs> I'm not doing any more. So, so far so good. We'll see what happens. I haven't had that happen in a very long time. And I haven't had it happen with Regia before. I can't remember what, I think I've only had it with like big box store acrylic yarn. I've been very lucky actually. So I'm gonna get a sip of coffee. I'm very tired from singing Beethoven last night and yesterday all day long. <laughs> so. so mom sock i am doing a little bit of a different recipe for her socks the very first pair that i made for her i did 2.25 millimeter needles which i'm doing now and i did 68 stitches instead of the typical 64 and i did a fish lips kiss heel which i've now done i haven't done one in a very long time it's kind of a short row heel very, very easy and simple. And the reason I'm doing this is because those, those socks are her favorite socks. They fit her the best. And I'm interested to see if these turn out the same way. The yarn is slightly plumper, so these might be bigger. My gauge is looser since I made those socks before. Um, when I made them before, the first pair, I was still fairly new knitter, and so a 2.25 millimeter needle was not the one I used all the time. I used a 2.5 because I had a tighter gauge. Um, but in the last year and a half or so, I've converted to a 2.25 millimeter needle for all of my socks because as you knit more, you get a little bit looser gauge, typically. So I'm interested to see how these fit her. Um, she has like basically the same feet as me, which is nice, but um, just a little bit wider, I think. So I think that's why the 68 stitches work really well. Um, and yeah, I think I did a seven inch foot. Obviously it's toe up. I used Judy, Judy's Magic Cast On. I really do prefer toe up. Um, I did 12 stitches on the bottom which is I think a deviation from the first sock that I did for her but I found the 10 stitches was just a little bit too pointy so these I think are really good I do want to try a rounded toe for the next vanilla sock so I can't wait to try that out um, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a shorter uh, what do you call that leg <laughs> Um, and a twisted rib sock or cuff rather with a um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off which is what I did the first time around sorry about my air conditioner um, so yeah so it's great great vanilla I literally knit in rehearsals this week which I was kind of pushing the boundaries so I'm I just was like, I'm waiting to get a note to like, Joanna, stop knitting and distracting the conductor. <laughs> but there were some things that we weren't singing in, and I've sung Beethoven 9 a bajillion times, the Ode to Joy. So I just was like, Freude, Schöne, Gute, Funke. I'm so many. But it was delightful. And then listening to the pieces that we weren't singing in in rehearsal yesterday morning and knitting, it was just like, great it made me feel very very grateful for that job so so that is my make in progress right now and I have some things that I want to cast on so here we go <laughs> oh I have this in one of my favorite bags by my friend Sandy of Sandy by the Lakeside yeah I don't know why that sounded <laughs> and it's in one of my favorite little sock size bags it's perfect light interfacing you can fold over the top to put it in your purse love it so i have some things that i want to cast on and also start for cross stitching which i'll share in cross stitch corner here in a little bit 
So, I gotta get my show notes back up. It keeps going to sleep. I need to change my setting. But So, the first thing I'm going to be casting on, I don't know why, you get like such a rush when you have yarn for specific projects and you're ready to cast on. And plus it's fall, so you've got that like beginning of school. I was hearing something on a podcast or the radio the other day that there's something about autumn and September that no matter how old you get, it's that rush of getting that fresh pack of crayons or pencils for school, the new stationery, brand new books. And I don't have that necessarily anymore. Sometimes I'll get like planner or journal things around this time of year. I do digital journaling now on my um, lovely iPad. Um, so I get like a new little stick, digital stick, blah, 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 digital sticker packs. Um, but getting something tangible and especially as a maker that you can make as well. Getting the new fabric for the shop update on Saturday was so exciting. It was like, oh, so I did that the other day. <laughs> First, I went into my stash because I'm trying to knit through stash, which there's more stash over there. That's another story. Um, because I want to do my first brioche project. I'm gonna be doing this for lovely Chelsea of Chelsea Makes, and she's also part of the duo of Legacy uh, Fiber Arts as well. Um, she has a fantastic new Patreon account that I'm a member of and um, it's so inspiring and beautiful and I love visiting with her, extra bonus content from their usual podcasts. And she is hosting, she's had a couple of different, I think maybe this is the second make along with that group. And this was, everybody was talking, they were like, okay, like who's afraid of brioche? who has something on brioche, who hasn't finished it because they hit a snag and we we're like, let's just come together and do this. So I haven't done brioche yet. I'm not afraid of it. It's just, I need to have the mental, it's a new, a new technique. So you just need to make sure that you carve out time and make it a priority to focus on it. And I'm craving something new, um, a new technique. I want to learn. Maybe it's that September thing again. So I'm going to cast on the Garter Snake Cowl by Lavania Patricella. Patricella, I'm not sure how to say your name. Sorry. Um, and I'm using stash yarn. So, funnily enough, I'm using some Legacy Fiber Arts in ele uh, elephant ears. This is in their steel toes base, and it's this beautiful tonal gray with slight pinks. So pretty. And paired with it, I'm gonna do this gorgeous skin of yarn by Chromatic Yarns. And this is in her Rage colorway. And this is inspired by um, Dungeons and Dragons characters or classes. And Rage, I think it's kind of inspired too by Critical Role, which I love, which is a streamed um, Dungeons and Dragons game played by a bunch of friends who are nerdy ass voice actors as I like to say and um, it's very entertaining it's like live theater each week it's fantastic storytelling so I thought that these went gorgeously together so this is gonna be a garter snake cowl and I will probably will cast it on sometime next week I gotta get through this week and the weekend. I'm super excited for this one. So the minute I saw the droplet capelet, I think that's how you say it, on Instagram by Denise um, Byron, I knew I wanted to make it right away. She is local to here in the Bay Area and it's just a perfect everyday accessory for the weather out here for layering. You can wear it in a variety of different ways, style it. Um, I just, it's perfect. It's perfection. So I really wanted to make it out of a um, dark gray yarn, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna go to my stash first. 
And I found some yarn that was gifted to me that was beautiful, that was Magpie Fibers, um, but it was a single space, 100% uh, merino wool, I believe. And it was kind of pilling a little bit. It was a little floofy and it wasn't super duper soft. And I think for this, I want something super drapey and super luxurious and comfortable. And that I, a yarn that I know will wear really well. And my first thought was Shibui. Crazy taste, but <laughs> Shibui and the staccato um, base, which I used paired with a mohair for my mix 34 cowl, and I loved knitting with it. And so, yeah, so in my craft afternoon the other weekend or last weekend, um, Margaret and I popped into a local yarn shop that I love called Avenue Yarns. Hi, ladies, if you're watching, and um. I, they have a gorgeous selection, a huge wall of Shibui yarns. And I picked up four skeins. <laughs> this is in the tar colorway. I mean, you can even see in the skein, it's like oh, the drape. Isn't that pretty? Let me get closer. I'm afraid that you guys are getting a little show today, but you're welcome. <laughs> Oh, this is so, so pretty. So this is in 70% superwash merino, 30% silk. So that feels good. It has this beautiful textured kind of ply to it. I think it's a two ply, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it says it on here. And I just think it's gonna be perfect for this for this capelet. So I will probably be casting this on next week as well. Yeah. <laughs> casting on all the things. And then for the pumpkin mow. Woo -woo. So for the fourth year, I can't believe it's the fourth year, uh, Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi, my fellow pump queen, we are hosting the Pumpkin Make Along, which is a celebration, oh, sorry, a celebration of all things pumpkin and really autumn as well. So you can stitch, so cross stitch embroidery this year as well. So weave, spin, crochet, I think that's all. I might be forgetting something. Um, anything inspired by pumpkin. Um, it started September 1st and it's going this year through October 31st. It's a little bit shorter, but that's so that we have time to pull winners and prizes and hopefully you can get those before Christmas. In previous years, because of my schedule and Christmas and holidays and everything, we weren't getting those to everybody until the new year. And I just thought, we thought, let's, let's, celebrate and get it to you by November. So um, I'm gonna be pulling um, some things from my prize pool. I'm gonna be making some bags um, for the prize pool. If you are a maker and would like to donate a prize to the Make Along, please let Gabby or I know and we would love to share that with everybody who's taking part in the Mal. And yeah. So this year, I, let me go get it, I am finally going to cast on the pumpkin spice mittens. It's taken me two, maybe three years to do this, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. I literally have it still kitted up in this bag since last year. Cray cray. I'm gonna use Rauma Fingal Yarn that I received as a lovely gift from Patricia in 2017 <laughs> at Rhinebeck. So there's a lot of wonderful memories with this. And yeah, I'm gonna do it because I don't wear mittens. Um, I haven't done this segment in a little bit. It's something I wanna do. I have a new segment that I do off and on called Things I Love But Will Never Make. And on there are mittens because I'm not in a climate for mittens and I don't go up to Tahoe enough, hardly ever, to wear mittens. But these, if I'm going to have one pair of mittens, I'm going to have some pumpkin spice mittens. 
and I've only made gigantic mitten stockings <laughs> that I did a couple years ago. Um, I finished those up for my Grammy for her grandkids and great grandbabies. So I would like to make a traditional pair of mittens. So I'm very, very excited. So I'll be casting these on probably next week as well. I'm gonna have a cast on party. And I'm sure there'll be something else pumpkin related that I wanna cast on, but I'm just gonna stick with this and come hell or high water, we're gonna be making a pair of mittens, y'all. So there you go. More details to come. This bag, I have to say I can't remember. I don't think it says, but I think it was gifted. So thank you if you gifted this. I love the lining. Isn't that great? It's a really cute drawstring bag. It's perfect. And it's halloween -y, so there you go. So cross stitch corner, finally some stitching. If you are a stitcher from Floss Tube, um, I do talk about cross stitching every um, episode. Um, I like to, because most of my stuff is knitting. Sometimes it could be more cross stitching heavy, but most of the time I start with knitting and then go into cross stitching. Um, don't know why I felt like I need to tell you that, but there we go. So I picked up again on my craft room noon, my Find the Witch Within that I have in one of my Stitching the High Notes bags here. And last time I talked about this, I had messed up the placement of the words on here. I have made peace with it. And, I, and I'm glad I brought this to my friend Margaret and she was like, just do it, it's no big deal. <laughs> Sometimes you just need, a lot of you had said that, you were like, just go with it, you're cool. And you just need your friends and, and you all to kind of go, just stop being such a Virgo and make peace with it. So I started this little bit here. I had done a little bit across the line here just to see if I could make peace with it being a little bit off and you really can't tell. It's just that I know that it's slightly off so I can kind of like zone in on it. Um, but yeah, I think it's okay. What had happened is literally the second stitch I had done, I had forgotten a stitch on the little part of the T up here. And so that means that I just didn't line up the find. This part here is supposed to be lined up with this and it's down, down a line. So whatever, we're going with it. So it'll say find the witch within. So I still have to do an I and an N and then it'll have like a little bit of flower. And this is a beautiful kit by Junebug and Darlin who are one of my favorite um, cross stitch designers. They have great kits as well. It comes with the hoop and the needle and the thread. Um, the thread comes pre-cut and I like doing it where you have a longer strand of a single piece and then you put it together and then you put it through and then you put your needle through the loop. I don't know if that made sense, but these are cut so that you kind of have to do it. They're shorter pieces, like maybe this long. I have to show you, I have a, it comes with a floss card on a library card, which is great. So they're these kind of like, they're probably like that long from here to here. So yeah, and then you have to do it where you put it through and kind of leave a little tail and when you come back through the top or come back through the bottom, you have to like catch that little tail. Anyway, so it's a little bit more finicky, but it's not too bad. But um, yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's pretty good. And you have to get the good lighting because it's on black. Um, but as long as you have a white piece of paper below you right here. So I usually have my pattern, you can see it through this window. That's how I designed it. So you can be out in the wind and stuff, especially windy San Francisco right now and see your pattern. Um, but yeah, it's white so I can kind of see the holes through it. I don't know if you can see that, that's good. And this is one of my favorite needle minders from um, A Needle Run Threat. It's inspired by Harry Potter. So chugging away on that off and on. And then for the pumpkin mal, 
I am finally making Playing With Jacks. I think that's what it's called, which is, I'm gonna just flash this. <laughs> that was a early prototype of a large size bag for my shop that I just use. Um, but this is by the Cricut Collection. Yeah, it's Playing With Jacks, designed by Vicki Hastings. And Jan Hicks Creates made this last year. Uh, and I was like, oh, I have to make that. So I bought the pattern. I'm gonna do a alternate pumpkin, which I don't wanna show the pattern too long, but I think it's this one right here. So that'll replace the jack-o'-lantern. So it's more of an, a fall-inspired design instead of kind of more Halloween. And right now, I'm finally bobbing up the, the thread. That's what I'm doing. I'm using some stash fabric I got out of a goodie bag from um, Needle in a Haystack, which is a local stitch shop in Alameda. I think it's 22 count. I can't remember. But I think it'll be perfect for this. I think I'm gonna do it in, I'm going between if I wanna stitch in hand versus in a Q-snap. I'm gonna try stitching in hand. I haven't done stitching in hand in a while. Um, and if I'm digging it in the hoop, I might switch to a Q-snap of probably 10 by 10 or at least. And yeah. I'm bobbining up, let me grab it here. I got like a new little kind of DMC bobbin holder. And I started, you can kind of see maybe, um, writing on the bobbins in Sharpie, but it's kind of smudging. So I got some DMC stickers yesterday or the other day at Joanne. So I'm gonna put those on here to kind of double, make sure I don't lose track of what these are. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of different colors for this. So I'm kind of kidding everything up because for me, kidding it up is really um, not the barrier, but it can, it can make or break me like jumping into a project. Um, and so that's why Stitch Mania for me sometimes is really good because it's just a matter of like the impetus to like um, kit everything up, get your stuff bobbined, get your colors together, get your pattern, get your needles, put everything in a bag so that you can go, oh, today, just like for knitting, you can say, oh, today I want to work on this stitch or today I want to work on this stitch so that you're not like getting your thread all over the place. You don't keep your thread just all together in one spot. You kit it up for that specific project. So that's what I'm doing right now. So that is Cross Stitch Corner. On to the next segment. So I have some shop news for an update this Saturday, September 7th at 10 a.m. I'm going to take you to Joanna of the future to share all those details. Good morning from the future. It's really just Friday morning, the next morning. I wanted to put a few finishing touches on the bag, so hence the future timey-wibby, wibbly-wobbly segment here. <laughs> I am so excited for the September update. I have some new bag styles to show you that I've been working on. And of course, every month I have new fabrics for you all, so I'm excited to show those to you right now. Okay. Let's get started. So the first um, bag style I'll be offering are a few of my standard drawstring style bags. I'm gonna have some Christmas fabric. I thought I'm just gonna bite the bullet because a lot of folks are already working on Christmas projects already. And when I saw this fabric at Stone Mountain and Daughter, I got all my fabrics this time around from there. I fell in love. I was with my friend Margaret who um, we had a craft noon the other day and we both went <gasps> when we saw this Christmas 
Christmas sloth fabric. Oh my gosh. And paired with this beautiful green Essex linen, just makes my heart sing. So I hope it does yours as well. These are um, perfect for socks or it's a little bit bigger than like a sock size bag. It's great for like a shawl, a one to two skein project. They're drawstring, fully lined, as you can see, with cotton as well, cotton batting. And they're nice and squishy, but they also stand up. Like I have nothing in this bag right now. So they're great. They can convert to a yarn bowl like this, which I do often. And they're all stamped with my little logo stamp. Yay. So I'll have a few drawstring bags in this fabric. I'll have a few in this fabric, which I fell in love with as well. I mean, I fell in love with all of these, but <laughs> uh, this is a, I call this fancy pumpkins fabric. And it's got like a little bit of a Halloween vibe to it, but not quite yet. If you're not quite ready for Halloween, but I'm always ready for Halloween. It, um, oh, I love it. It's paired with a black Essex linen for the drawstring channel and the bottom. Same quilt batting inside. It's got a cream color lining and black cotton twill. All of the twill is cotton and eco-friendly as well. Yay! And then finally, I will have a few in this gorgeous sunflower. I, I'm not done with sunflowers. I need, I saw this Mom actually picked this up actually at a local um, shop to her, which the name I'm forgetting, I will put it down here. And she sent me a picture and I said, I need to have that for September. <laughs> it's got this great vintage lining, uh, writing in the background. You can see it says fleur. So I'm calling these autumnal fleurs and um, Essex linen on the bottom and the drawstring channel. I will have a cream drawstring channel or a cream drawstring for this. It's on its way from Amazon. I think it's about to be delivered actually. <laughs> cream lining and it's also stamped as well. There you go. So I'll have a few of each in the shop and then this is a new bag, these gigantic sweater size bags. I really wanted to offer some sweater size bags for starting with this update because it's Sweater Weather. We are already working on our sweaters. And I really liked this shape. It's longer than kind of the typical sweater size bag. I liked it. It's a little bit deeper, a little bit taller, higher, but um, I really liked it being kind of this longer size so you can kind of spread out your project and also it looks really cute under your arm like a clutch <laughs> and I have handles yay I'm excited to introduce handles to the shop they have the Essex linen on the bottom and there are zippers I am doing zippered bags you guys for I do zippers for the needlework bags, but I haven't done like a zipper bag in a while. And I'm doing tabs, zipper tabs. And seriously, if I had figured out how to do uh, zipper tabs early on, I would have had zipper bags earlier. <laughs> Cause I think they're just cleaner, they look really nice, and it makes it a lot easier to sew. These are, I'll have the measurements online. You'll see those. I still need to measure them to tell you the truth. Um, measurements for everything is online. I have cream lining and my little logo. Same quilt batting fabric. So it stands up pretty well, but it's a larger bag. So of course it is not as plump and ready to stand up like these guys. Uh, but it is, it'll go into your bag nicely, fold over if you have like just the beginnings of your sweater project. So I have it in this, blah, blah. I'm like getting ready for a gala right now. So I need to like slow my roll as I show these to you right now. <laughs> I'm already like, okay, I gotta get my gown. I gotta get my spanks. I gotta get my hose. I gotta get my jewelry. <laughs> I'm 
got a million things going through my mind. I know you all understand. So I will have sweater size bags in this fancy pumpkin in the Christmas Christmas slaws. That's really difficult to say. Oh, it just makes me smile. I love this one. And then also in the sunflower fabric. And of course the cuts will vary, but they'll probably a little, be a little bit of a fleur on every bag, hopefully. Oh, this one. And if you would like a handle on this drawstring bag, just let me know. I didn't want to put them on all of them because I wasn't sure. I know I use just the twill tape for my handle for these, but if you would like a little handle right here, let me know in your order in the comment section and I'd be happy to add that on for you, no extra charge. So, and then we have some needlework bags. So, I have my standard needlework bag in the sunflower fabric. See it there? And this is a seven by seven window and it fits easily an eight by eight Q-snap, which I have down here for demonstration purposes. So you could fit that in there. It's easy peasy, a lot of different, a lot of patterns will work perfectly in this bag and it's very portable, it's very easy. So there you go. And I will have it in fancy pumpkins and Christmas slaws. Then I'm excited to bring back new and improved super large needlework bags. Whoa, they're falling all over. <laughs> I saw a bunch of people, and myself included, for my playing with Jack's pumpkin um, make. It's a bit bigger, so I need a bigger bag. So I wanted to reintroduce these. I need to um, measure them so they'll be on there, but they fit easily at 11 by 11 Q-snap, even a little bit more than that. I have one here. Let me grab it to demonstrate. <laughs> So you can see, so this is a 11 by 11 and it fits easily in there with extra room for all of the fabric that you'd have around the hoop, around the cues now. So I will have these, this is a nine by nine window. So it's a larger window, which is great. And I will have it in sunflower, fancy pumpkins, and Christmas slaws. I just love this one. So great. Isn't that fun? They all have quilt batting as well. So it uh, provides some extra padding, which I really love. That's why I made these designs so that you could put all of your stuff for your needlework project in here and not worry about it poking through. Um, you know, you should have plenty of padding and everything so that you have your project usually up here in the front and everything behind it. So like your scissor notions bag and all of your thread and everything. So if it's nice and cozy in there. So quite a lot of different varieties of bags for September. There are still a handful, I think three or four linen bags still in the shop. So if you're interested in those, those will still be in there tomorrow, Saturday. And I will have some acorn um, stitch markers coming that I'll be putting up sometime next week when they arrive. Um, I'll be ordering more themed Christmas, um, or I have some Christmas stitch markers that I'll put up sometime next week as well. And I have a little bit more yardage in all of these different fabrics to restock as needed depending on what um, sells. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. So enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions at uh, opperjo at stitchingthehighnotes.com. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but as I said, I need to get ready for the gala. So I will send you back to Joanna of the past. Bye. <laughs>
That brings us to backstage chatter. So I mentioned that we have our galas this week. We had our symphony gala last night, which was magical. It was the opening of the symphony season and it was the last opening for our fearless leader and conductor and maestro, Michael Tilson Thomas, who's been with the symphony. This will be his 25th season and he's retiring. So it was a huge celebration of him and all of the work that he's done. And it'll be that way throughout the season as well. So it was a great kickoff for that. Um, we sang, the chorus got to sing this year, which was great. We did um, a piece, a rendition of Shenandoah. Um, we did, the guys did some Copeland pieces. Um, the symphony, did a couple of pieces that I can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. And then the big finale was um, Beethoven 9, the last movement, the Ode, Ode to Joy. I'm a little hoarse today. <laughs> we had rehearsals Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning, so it was just a lot of Beethoven this week. Um, that dude was deaf, man. <laughs> just screaming our faces off. But the result is a moving and exuberant piece. So, um, And then at the end, there were some folks that came out and gave him gifts, um, teams, jerseys with his name on them. Um, the governor was there, Gavin Newsom. Nancy Pelosi was there. I lost it and cried and we all stood up and hooted and hollered because she's our hometown gal. Um, they were just, yeah. And there were video messages from people. Yo-Yo Ma, who's a, ch a famous cellist who I've adored since I was a kid. I remember him on uh, Mr. Rogers and I played cello when I was a kid so I idolized him. He's fantastic. Um, so yeah, and then we went to the after party, the course we got to go to the after party. So that was a lot of fun. I stayed for maybe a half an hour or so, and then it got too, too full of people for me. I was very overwhelmed and it was super loud and I was tired for the week too. So I skedaddled and got home and couldn't get to sleep until about 1230 or one. So I'm pretty pooped. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fantastic. A good a good kickoff to the season. Uh, and now the next one, so I work at the Opera in Fundraising and Arts Administration, and um, oh, I'm so excited for this season. It's gonna be really, really fantastic. We have our opening on Friday, so tomorrow. So we're very busy getting ready for that and all that entails. Um, we are starting with Romeo and Juliet by Gounod, and um, then the next day is Billy Budd, um, which I can't wait to see. It's by Benjamin Britten. And yeah, and then there's Marriage of Figaro. We're doing a brand new production um, that we are building, which is really exciting. Oh, and we got to go to the scene shop the other day uh, with my department, which was fantastic. We got to see their giant sewing machines. We got to see them painting sets. We got to see their woodworking stations. They have a new... I called it like a giant cricket machine, <laughs> but they have a new laser cutter uh, and they made some really cool coasters for us, which were cool. Um, and it was lovely to meet everybody there. And then they have the costume storage. So you know I lost my poop <laughs> from that. I, it was amazing. It was so cool to see costumes that we built, that we own from over the years stored there. Um, and so the Manuel who works there, he pulled out a whole bunch of, um, ones and the really cool ones were Bob Mackie and, um, I got to try on a glove made by Bob Mackie or his house, so to speak, his people. Oh, so cool. And some of the costumes that I recognized from productions that I've seen or photos or that I've or kept tabs on over the years as a singer myself and student and 
there was one by Beverly Sills that was worn by Beverly Sills, who's one of my favorite singers ever and people ever, and that just made me like kind of have this full circle crazy moment. It was really cool. So yeah, lots lots going on, but really exciting. And it's fun to be totally immersed in music in all different capacities. So so what else? Oh yeah, I wanna share the books I'm reading right now. So I have one over there, which is the book of speculation that I got from the library. I'm about halfway through. I'm frankly on the fence about whether I'm gonna continue with it. Um, I'm just not itching to read it. Like the story isn't capturing me anymore. So I might just return it. And then if I ever want to like pick it up again, I can go check it out again. So yeah, which is the beauty of libraries. Um, I um, am testing out eBooks through the library. Um, so I got The Witches of New York, I think is what it's called. I'll have all the details down here, which Jacqueline of Brooklyn Netfolk mentioned um, the other day. So I have that checked out to start to read to see if I like it. Um, I'm super into witches right now because it's September, October, so there you go. I'm gonna get a sip of coffee here. Mm. Oh yes, I oh I returned A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I started to read it and I just was not into the story, so I returned that to the library. And then I um, was talking to Denise, my bud Denise of Earth Tones Girl podcast, um, and we just were like, I think I had like a calm quote because I do meditation every morning through the Calm app. And I share, if you follow me on Instagram, I try to every day share a quote um, from that from that day's meditation. And um, there was some quote some day where she said, that sounds like Gandalf. And we discovered we both have never read um, Lord of the Rings, the series. We've seen the movies, but we haven't read them. And we just, the, the idea of having the audiobook and knitting and being cozy right now just sounded really great. So we're going to do a little friend read along and try to sync up and be on the same chapter so we can talk about it at the same time. So um, I cheated a little bit and got the Kindle book too because they're free. Um, but now I have the audio book too and I'm not really that far into it. Um, I do like going back and forth, which is why I'm interested in finding library books that I can check out the e-audiobook and the e-book e if they're available so I can continue to do that kind of switching back and forth so I can listen in the car, then I can pick up my e-reader, my Kindle and read it on there. So I do love having the actual books too, but I need, when I have my symphony schedule, um, it's better to do the audio and ebook, and then when I have like a little bit of a slower schedule, I like having that physical book. So anyway, still figuring out my my rhythm, my reading rhythm. And then yeah, the last thing for those of you that are still here and sticking around, I thought you would like to know that because um, a lot of you have mentioned over the years and asked if I would be doing this, and I am. I am on Patreon. Yay! I, it's something I've wanted to do for about three years now. I've been a Patreon member or a patron of creators um, over the years and I love the platform. I love that it's a way for me to support my favorite makers and podcasters and artists. Um, for me to get bonus content to kind of get a more intimate view into what they're doing. As an artist myself, I like seeing how the effect of such a platform has on creators, the artistic freedom that it gives them. And um, I finally bit the bullet and did it. I think I was inspired, I was starting to think about it this year and then was inspired because Chelsea recently joined and Kemper of Junk Yarn recently did as well. I've been a patron of Melody Melody Hoffman, uh, Bee Mandarins, for quite some time, and she's super, super inspiring. I love seeing her behind the scenes vlogs of what she's thinking about designing, things that she can't 
or chooses not to, and you really can't share on here on YouTube in the public sphere because of kind of being worried about copyright issues, if you will. And also like when you have that kind of more intimate community happening and you know people are truly invested monetarily but also with their time in what you're creating it creates this like free creative flow a little bit more so i've been interested in just seeing how that works from the other side instead of being a patron but as a creator myself and uh yeah so i'm on there um don't worry you don't have to do it i always was like i'm never gonna say that because people say that but I do want to say it's if you want to opt in it is bonus content and it is another way for you to support the podcast so the the funds that will come from it will be going towards the podcast and also ongoing minimal business costs for the shop but it will pay for the giveaway prizes which I'm starting to do a lot more again of um, it'll go towards just the filming um, it'll go towards kind of design classes and things that I really want to take because I have some designs in my head that I just need to get down and like make the time and carve out the time to do. Um, so yeah. And, and more importantly, it's just a way to kind of join in in a, a really close, closer knit community of folks. So if you're interested, go check it out. I have a link down below in the show notes. I'll just briefly kind of go through the three little tiers that I've set up. You can set up um, the different tiers and kind of benefits that you want to offer. So I did three tiers. The starting one is two bucks a month. Easy, easy peasy, simple. Um, and it's called the beautiful maker tier. <laughs> and so at this, the benefits are access to community posts on Patreon. It's a great platform. It's fantastic. They're local to here and I actually um, interviewed with Patreon before I got my job at the opera because they're really cool people. They're really cool. Um, so at the beautiful maker tier, you'll get access to community posts. It'll be kind of like blog posts every once in a while. Um, more kind of behind the scenes stuff, a little bit more in depth than what I usually post on Instagram. And it'll be in between episodes here on YouTube. And then they have this thing called lens on Patreon, which is kind of like Instagram stories. So I'll have a little bit extra content on there I'll be testing out. Um, but my stories on Instagram are not gonna change. I'm still gonna be sharing all the stuff that I've been sharing, so no worries there. And then the next tier is Stitchy Misfit. The Stitchy Misfits. And so this is for five bucks a month. And this, um, you'll get access, you'll get all this stuff at the earlier tier. And then the big thing is I'll be doing weekly vlogs. Yay! So these will be literally me sitting down in front of the camera, minimal editing. They might be five minutes. They might be an hour. <laughs> I like how it was like, oh, I have not that much to talk about. And we're probably about an hour and a half into this episode. Maybe not quite that bad, but, um, but yeah. So I thought this would be cool to offer the five buck a month level and um, it'll just be extra content than what I do here on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, it'll be a little bit more um, behind the scenes of like what I'm thinking about for this shop, um, what I'd like to do, kind of what I've tested out, what hasn't worked, things that I'm not for me personally, super comfortable putting out in the super public sphere, especially on Instagram and stuff, um, which means stuff about family. So I'll be sharing a little bit more about family. Um, what else? Thoughts about things that are not necessarily making related. Um, yeah. So if you're interested for some little extra visits, check that out. Um, and then, oh yeah, and at that level two will be invitations to uh, live stream chats every once in a while, so that'll be exciting. I've enjoyed that with um, Katie Greenbean and a couple of other folks that I uh, support. 
And then the final tier is the amazing creator tier, as I've called it, and that's at 10 bucks a month. And you get everything at the other levels. And you get recognition as a patron on every episode here of Stitching the High Notes. And you get a postcard from me, it could be pen pals. You get a postcard from me every few months. I'm excited to do that. And then you get a 10% discount code every month for the shop as a huge thank you. So yeah, that's what I've got set up. So head on over to Patreon if you're interested um, and join us on that little growing community over there. I know I've enjoyed enjoyed being part of it for Chelsea and Melody and Katie and a bunch of folks. So um yeah, I'm excited for this new kind of chapter in Stitching the High Notes. So let me look at my notes to make sure I did forget to talk about anything today. Excuse me as I scroll. I think that was it. I'm late for work, so I need to leave. <laughs> I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna rest my voce, my voice. And yeah, a little reminder, the shop updates Saturday the 7th. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all again really soon. Hopefully not quite as long. I just had summer schedule. Um, uh, I'd like to start doing bi-weeklies. We'll see. Um, but yeah, cheers and have a wonderful weekend and week ahead.